Hey y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. My name is Dominic Insinius. I'm the leader of this church community, and I'm so grateful that you have taken some time out of your day in your journey of faith to be a part of what God is doing here in the city of San Marcos. We have a saying around here, you don't have to go to church here to go to church here, and that means you are welcome to enjoy this message from your tablet, phone, or computer, wherever you're watching it on. Big things can happen when we expect God to move, so I pray today that God would speak to you through this message, the message today can encourage you and empower you to move throughout your week and what's next in your life. So enjoy this message. Y'all, we are uh, wrapping up our message series today called The Only Constant. And if you haven't been here over the last couple of weeks, what we have done is taken kind of a deep dive into what change looks like in our life. The change that you and I experience in life, in faith, in marriage, in parenting, all the different the areas of our life that change affects us. Sometimes one change in our life can affect every other area of our life. And so what we've done over the last few weeks is taken a look at like, okay, how can we embrace change, right? That's one of the ideas we talk through. How can when change comes, right, and we're not ready for it, it's always the most difficult change, right? The one we're not ready for. So when change comes our way, how can we put ourselves in a position to be, to be embracing change? Not just resistant to change, which is very natural, there are some people, some outliers that, that love a good change and, and, and love when things uh, get changed up. For a lot of us, though, for most of us maybe, change can be inconvenient. So how could we be people who embrace change? And then actually, last week, uh, if you weren't here, it was a great message. Crystal spoke last week, and she had this incredible idea of responding, not reacting to change. When change comes into your life, how can you set yourself up to where you respond healthily to change? And you might think, well, yeah, I, I always want to respond healthily to change, but it doesn't always happen that way. And I think it doesn't always happen that way because sometimes we react to change. So that was a great message. If you missed that, you can catch up. You can catch up on all the messages on our uh, podcast or on YouTube. Well, today, as we wrap up the series, anytime we come to the end of a series, kind of the end of an idea, what I always like to do is kind of like look forward into the future, okay? So if we never, ever talk about change again, and this five-week series is the only time we'll ever address change at the heart, what I want to do as we end the series is kind of set you up, set myself up, because I grow, I'm growing through these series with you, I'm growing my faith along with you as well. I want to set us up to say, okay, when change comes in the future, right? The one, the, the inevitable change that is on the way, the one we haven't prepared for, the one that we're not ready for, the one that's not even on our radar. But what I also want to do with today's message is I want to talk about not only that inevitable change that is coming our way, but what if, what if you were the kind of person that instead of for waiting for change to affect you, you became an agent of change in your life. Instead of being a victim to the change that hits you, you become an agent of change. You become the person in your life that is creating the change that you want. Now, what happens for us to do that? What happens for you and I to be the kind of people that create change in our life? Now, I'm not talking about doing crazy things unless you need to. Unless you got to do something crazy. I don't, I don't know what kind of decision you need to make today, but I'm, I'm going to be here just, you know, hyping you up. Do it. Call them. Say it. I'm just kidding. I don't know what you need to say. You should tell them, though. You should tell them. So uh, this has come up a few times, and I'm not proud to say it, but every now and then I'll scroll on a certain app called TikTok. I don't know if you've heard of it. All the kids are into it. And every now and then, this thing, you know, the algorithm finds you. I don't know, I, I, you know I'm, not, I'm not a tech guy. But sometimes the algorithm finds what I like to see, and it shows me more of those videos. And there's been this one coming up. Tell me if you've seen it. It's some TV show that I don't know exactly where it's streaming on, I didn't, and I just get little clips of it, 
I like that I'm holding your hand explaining how the internet works. <laughs> and it's the show called Couples Therapy. Anybody heard of it? Okay. So what it is, it's, uh, and I'm not saying you should watch the show because I haven't seen it. I'm just looking at the, at the little bits that I have on TikTok. Okay. So what happens is there's these four couples that have agreed to go through couples therapy and all of it is on camera. The entire therapy session, all of their arguments, all of their frustrations. You get to hear what the therapist thinks. You get to, you know, as you're, as you're listening to this conversation with these two people, you're like, oh, man, he's right. And like, oh, I don't know, she's right. And I'm just judging them. I mean, if, you, if you like to judge people, this is the show for you, okay? Because you really get, that, get those juices going. And what, what it has done... I mean, it's such tea. If you like, you know, the tea and you like people's drama, this is your kind of thing. And I do. I like when I'm looking at other people's drama and not my drama. So what it's done, though, is it, I can look at these people, okay? And I, in, my ver in my most judgmental day, my most judgmental moment, I can look at these people and I can say, I can, I can see exactly what this guy needs to change. I can see the change that is written all over this guy's face and he is ignoring it. Or I can look at this girl and I can say, she is missing the point of what he's saying. She's not even hearing him. There's some major change that needs to happen in her life. And without a doubt, or maybe there, maybe there is doubt, I don't know. But for me, watching this show or watching the clips of this show, it's got me thinking about my own couples therapy that I have been in with my wife. We've been in therapy together for, gosh, coming up on maybe seven years, if not more. And sometimes we go every month, sometimes we go every couple of months, sometimes we go every week. They're just depending on some things that we need to work through. And I'm a huge proponent of counseling. I always recommend that uh, people go to counseling, go to counseling as a couple, as a family, go on your own. It has been transformational for me. And I say that to say, so I, I, I'm taking you through, the, through this journey of couples therapy because it's in therapy where I have learned some things about me that I didn't know were true, okay? And, and let me tell you what I mean by that. There's, there's apparently some way, and I'm, I've been told by uh, my wife, and this is going to be playful. I love her, and she loves me a lot. So uh, I have been told by my wife, who is not here, uh, <laughs> that's what she gets, I guess, right? I've been told by my wife that sometimes when I talk, that I talk as if I know what I'm talking about when I actually don't. Does anybody know anybody like this? <laughs> uh, so, so, there are sometimes, if I'm very tired, you know, you get it. There's sometimes when I'm kind of talking about something or, or, or somebody asks me a question, because there's this, there, it, it, I'll give you a little bit of my marriage, okay? Sometimes my wife will ask a question, and I'll give kind of an answer of what I think. And she'll say, is that right, or is that true? And I'm like, oh, I don't know, I was just kind of guessing. And she was like, why don't you just say, I don't know? Does anybody else have these conversations in their life? Okay, she's like, why don't you just say, I don't know? I was like, okay, I'll do that next time, okay? <laughs> Stop me if you know where this is going. So she asked me a, another question, and I say, oh, I don't know. And she's like, really? You don't even know anything? You can't even take a guess? I'm like, when do you want a guess? And when do you want it? I don't know. Well, I found the formula. Here's the formula. Here's the change. Here's the couples therapy. You ready? This is all for free. You guys are getting juice for your, for your marriages and relationships. Okay. So what I'll do, because I have a strong aversion of being told what to do. Like, like a, a deep, and, and maybe nobody loves being told what to do, but if somebody tells me what to do, my reaction like a child, and, and I'm, I'm in my early 40s, my reaction like a child is just to do the opposite of what you just said. I will, I will just do the opposite. You can't go in that door. This is the only door I'm going in. Watch me. Arrest me. <laughs> Local pastor <laughs> causes disturbance at the restaurant for going in the women's bathroom or whatever. You know what I mean? I have to use the bathroom here. So here's what I'll do. So here's what I'll do. And, 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 and I'll tell you, this, is, this has come through therapy, okay, what I'm about to tell you. Because if somebody says, with my wife, who I love very much and who I trust with everything in me, says, don't answer questions if you don't know 
the answer. Don't answer questions if the answer should be, I don't know. My reaction is, get ready, because there, now there's nothing I don't know. Now I know everything. Test me, quiz me. So here's what I got to do. Check this out. And this and it's so simple, but so difficult. And you don't have to be married to appreciate how difficult it is to, you know, talk with another human being. You have parents, you have siblings, you have a mirror. <laughs> you know how difficult you can be sometimes, I'm sure. So here's what I'll do. Is I'll try something where I'll say, there's a question, you ask me a question. And I'll say, I'll say what I think, and then I'll say, and it's so simple, Maybe you can guess. I'll just say, in my opinion. That's my opinion. And that, if I choose to say it's my opinion, then it's a, it's a wonderful conversation. But if I'm told that that's my opinion, <laughs> oh, then I dig in deep. So here, what's my point with all this? Here's my point. Is the change that you activate in your life is always going to be easier to deal with than the change that is thrust upon you. Instead of being a victim to the change that is thrust upon you, what if you became an agent of change? What if in your life, however the situation works, you were the person that said, okay, yeah, after what I just said, that's my opinion. I don't know, I don't know if, that's, uh, if that's a fact, and th that could be wrong. I'm not quite sure, but that is my opinion. Now, maybe you don't have that particular issue, and you don't have that exact thing to work through, but I wonder, in your life, Maybe it has happened before or it's going on right now. You're probably dealing with some kind of change that you didn't initiate. But what if you took that same change that you didn't initiate and you now become an agent of change? It's no longer, it's no longer victimizing you, this change in your life. It's no longer victimizing you. Now you have an opportunity to be a part of the change, to grow with the change. That's what I want for you. That's what I want for me for the change that comes our way because it's going to happen. There's going to be things put in front of us. Now, there will be in our life changes that we're surprised by, so I'm not saying you won't be surprised by change, but, but there are ways where you can own the change. You can own the change in the same way that you own your faith. If I can talk specifically to the faith part of your life. I can tell you, well, maybe I can only tell you through my experience. <laughs> this is my opinion. <laughs> See what I did? I can tell you that every single major growth in my faith, I I'm not going to guarantee it for yours. I can tell you that every single major growth, every time that my faith has grown three sizes, has been through some dramatic change in my faith. Something that either shook up or attempted to shake up my faith. Some dramatic change. And the reason I you know, brought up this couples therapy, because you see the story so many times, you see it happen on movies and television, maybe you know people, where there is a marriage or a relationship that splits apart and it's not until the split, it's not until someone says, fine, I'm out of here. It's not until there is some dramatic thing that happens that the other person says, oh, maybe it's time for me to change. But what I want is for us to not have to wait until something dramatic to happen for us to be able to initiate change in our life. I don't want us to have to be the kind of people who have to wait to be told by a doctor, you should have been eating healthier 10 years ago, right? Where we can initiate the change. I don't want us to be the kind of people that have to wait to be told by the doctor, yeah, you should have been stretching out that knee uh, 40 years ago. You can't just start now or whatever it is, whatever knee problems you have. I'm just talking about my knee problems, I guess. So I want to look at a particular verse today. This is uh, in the uh, book of Hebrews. No coffee joke there. 
And in this particular part, what I want to look at is uh, uh, the book of Hebrews was believed to be written by a man named Paul, okay? And he is kind of addressing, he's talking about our faith. And where our faith can be placed, the things that Jesus has done, reminding us this particular book or this part of the the story, he's reminding the readers of the people in history who have shown great faith. Okay, so he talks about Moses, some of the heroes of the Bible that you might be familiar with, some of the names you might be familiar with, people who have shown great amounts of faith. And he wants to remind us to keep our faith. Now, when it comes to faith, something very important to me, and this is, you know, through my experience and my faith and through, uh, through you know, through the years as I've uh, grown in my faith, it's very important to me to recognize and appreciate that all of us are on different journeys of faith. That especially when it comes to like a church context, there can, there can sometimes be this, this, this pressure or, or, or something there where there can be this like, okay, when you're at church or if you're coming to church or if you're going to be at church again, you, 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 you should have kind of your faith a little bit further along than it is or, you know, you should never have any doubts or if you have doubts, you know, don't bring them in here on a Sunday. Don't bum us out with your doubts on a Sunday, right? That can sometimes be the energy that there is at church on a Sunday morning. You want to be excited, you know, it's good to see everybody, it's good to sing these songs, and we're only going to be here for a little bit, so let's really try to enjoy as much as we can. And so sometimes our journey of faith can be kind of lost in that, because we feel like, well, I should have, I should have probably prayed more this week. I should have probably read the Bible a little bit more this week. Ah, oh, Sunday's coming up. I told that person I was going to call him, and I didn't call him. I might see him on Sunday. Uh, so there's just kind of a, like this pressure that shows up there, or it can be. <laughs> and maybe you didn't feel that before, and you feel it now. So I didn't mean to uh, put the pressure on you. Again, I'm just talking about some of the experiences I've had. So, so it's important for me to be able to say wherever you are on your journey of faith, and when I say that, I absolutely mean that, because some of you, sitting in here or watching or listening, sometimes it's very easy to have faith, right? Sometimes you wake up and it's, just, it's a very easy day to trust God. Sometimes it's easy to trust God with our finances. Sometimes it's not. Sometimes it's easy to trust God with something that we have going on in our life, and sometimes it's not. So if you're in a place right now where it's easy for you to have faith today, and I want you to hold on to that faith. And if you're at a place today where you're having difficulty trusting God to show up, you're having difficulty trusting God to even hear what you're saying, and you're just looking for something to hold on to, then we want to be here for you. These are the different journeys of faith that we're all dealing with. And so when it comes to your faith, wherever you are in your journey of faith, I want to speak to you and your faith from this verse that Paul is writing. So this is Hebrews 12, 1. Oh, that's 11. Hold on. Might be good too. This is Hebrews 12, 1. It says, therefore, since we are surrounded by such a huge crowd of witnesses to the life of faith, let us strip off every weight that slows us down, especially the sin that so easily trips us up, and let us run with endurance the race God has set before us. That's the word I want for you in your faith, is endurance. Because if we can be people, if we can be people that live, uh, that live a faith that endures, then change that comes our way, we don't need to be a victim to it. Instead of being people who are victims to change, who life happens to, we are going to be people who are agents of change. Because if you want to, I, I recommend reading Hebrews right before chapter 12, reading Hebrews up to there, because we pick up where he says we're surrounded by a huge crowd of witnesses to a life of faith right before then. That's where Paul was talking about all of these different people who have, have lived the faith before. And how we get to stand on the shoulders of people who have had faith. We get examples of faith. And so it's one thing to read about change, right? 
It's one thing to watch this show, Couples Therapy. I'd love to know if you ever watch it. It's one thing to watch other people's problems and be able to easily see and spot the changes that they need to make. But what if, what if tomorrow morning, Monday morning, we took a hard look at ourselves, at our faith, and said, okay, what are some changes? What's a change? What is a change that you can choose to make in your life Monday morning? I don't know what it is, whatever it is for you. Maybe it's a change that you want to make to grow yourself spiritually. Maybe it's a change you want to make to grow yourself mentally. Maybe it's a change you need to make to grow yourself emotionally. Maybe it's a change you need to make to grow yourself physically. I want you, I want me, I want us to be able to become agents of change. I don't want to be a victim to change. I know there's going to be things that are going to come into my life that, um, that I'm not quite ready for. There's going to be things that happen where I didn't see that coming. I can't stop that. But what I can do is I can intentionally put myself in a position to say, okay, something's coming up, and it's, it's making me, making my faith a little bit shaky. Maybe there's something I need to pay attention to here. There's something that's come up, and it's making some of my conversations with my spouse a little bit shaky. Maybe there's something I need to look into there. There's something where, something at work or something with your parenting or with your friends or with your health, whatever it is. So if we know in our life that the only constant in our life is change, we know that's going to be there, then how can we become the agents of change that make that happen? The change that we initiate is always going to be easier than the change that is forced upon us. So how can we choose to own our change in the same way that we choose to own our faith? That's what I want for us. If you could, I want you to close your eyes for a moment and bow your heads. I want to pray for you this morning. God, we are so grateful that no matter what change comes our way, that our faith rests in you. Our faith lives in you, the unchanging God. God, I pray that no matter where we are on our journey of faith, that you see us, you know us. Thank you that we can be in a community that trusts each other, a community that sees each other. God, I pray that we would be bold enough and brave enough to become agents of change in our life, that we wouldn't let change just happen to us. We would prepare ourselves mentally, prepare ourselves emotionally, prepare ourselves spiritually. Thank you for being with us on this journey of faith and providing the light to see ahead of us. We love you. Amen. Y'all, thanks so much for joining us today at The Heart. To find out what is next for you in your journey of faith, I want to invite you to go to theheart.church slash next. See what's in store for you. Get in touch with us. We would love to be able to connect with you and see how we can partner with you in your journey. I hope you have a great rest of your week, and we'll see you soon.